We'll start with the Irish Independent this morning. Unacceptable to cancel games without talking to players, says the GPA. That's Dunica Boyle and Colin Keyes' story on the back of the Indo. So this is following a course of criticism, really, from uh, managers in Division 4 teams after dead rubber games were called off. What are they going to do about it? Completely. The GPA. Well, they've released a statement, and uh, I guess that's the, the first step to doing something. We appreciate, this is David Collins, the president of the GPA, we appreciate that the county boards are under pressure and that adverse weather conditions have complicated the intercounty fixture planner, but there is no excuse for not consulting players before announcing the cancellations. These cancellations will cause significant disruption to teams who are preparing for the championship. Uh, the GPA will continue to meet with GEA representatives to make the case that such unilateral decisions are unacceptable and must not be repeated in future. Open dialogue with players is a far superior to approach to handling situations like this. So, so just um, parse that for me, translate it. What are they going to do about it? Uh, well, the GPA haven't exactly specified what they are going to do about it, but they're, they have certainly said that they're unhappy. They're going to continue to meet with high-level GAA officials. Yeah, and open dialogue uh, is a far superior approach in, in their kind of esteemed opinion. It's unacceptable, basically, and, uh, you know... They may be right. They may be right it is unacceptable. So, uh, just to clarify, they're going to continue to talk to the same people that they were talking to. Isn't the definition of insanity to continue doing the same thing and expect different results? Precisely, but... It, they're going to continue doing what they've been doing, which is having high-level talks with officials who are taking uni uni unilateral action that they're not party to, and they're hoping to stop that unilateral action from happening. Like... At some point, they're just going to have to say, no, no, be it on this issue or another issue or whatever the straw is that breaks the camel's back from the player's perspective. But you can't just issue a strongly worded statement. Dear Irish Times, this thing is very bad. Here's a funny line. Yours sincerely. Maybe that'll get clipped and sent around. Maybe everybody will think I'm... Nothing happens. It, literally nothing happens. The GPA do say they've been working closely in recent days with teams involved. And they do say they were very disappointed that the players were not asked for their input before the games were cancelled. So, again, I need to stress here, Ger, they're very disappointed. Uh, we'll come back to that story a little bit later on, but if you want to give us your thoughts, you can drop a comment um, at Off The Ball AM or below the youtube.com forward slash Off The Ball feed. Uh, so, John O'Shea is going to retire from the game in May. Apparently, in the next five days, he's going to announce his retirement. Um, still only 36, uh, 14 leading honours in a 19-year career. Gary Doyle has that exclusive... Um, and then also the other story there is that uh, <laughs> James Ryan is, still has his toughest test to face. Um, this is uh, Stuart Lancaster's press conference yesterday. I mean, it's true because he's never lost a game. At some point, he's going to lose a game, and that will be like. A how new does experience. James? How does James Ryan react from this massive believe. career setback? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing. You'll never believe how many games James Ryan has lost in his career. The answer is zero. Clickbait ruined. Uh, it's rugby on the front of the Irish Times sports section as well. Gordon Darcy saying the people's game this month maybe. But winning is what keeps them coming back. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, why not? Like, so here's the thing, right? If you're a columnist and you dominate the news agenda and the internet for the best part of a week on the back of your column, you are il primo columnisto in Orlando at the moment. It's like, I was reading it going, I know what's going to happen with this. Uh, but the, it's just weird that everybody is obsessed with going, no, no, you're wrong. You're 100% wrong. Look at this and look at this. And what about this? It's like, why does everybody care so much? Why do you care when somebody says, oh, at the moment I feel like my sport is the best? Yeah, it, it's like that house in everybody's neighborhood that puts up the most incredible Christmas lights every year. And it's, they do it because they know people are driving past the house and they're like, do you see those lights? And they talk about it for a few minutes. Look at the gee bags in there, what? Exactly. They're fancy lights. That's, Who do they think they are with their fancy lights? That's what a column like this is. And do you know, some people get enjoyment out of lovely Christmas lights. You know, sometimes there's, there's kind of a, a reverent feel about them. Sometimes it's just outrageous. And, you know, look, there's, there's Santa there on, on a reindeer, or kind of on top of the roof. And that's what this is. It's just this thing where it doesn't have great importance and it probably is not going to change your life but for that brief moment when you're driving past the house you will be absorbed by it and you will end up chatting about it and but it's uh, a week later and everybody's still chatting about the lights no everybody yes every er, well sorry everybody is giving out about the people who have an opinion about the lights it's like how dare you say that one sport is better than the other every sport is great no matter what your favorite sport is that's fine and that's probably correct but it's got sort of i i don't know it, 
it, it's got pretty heavy, that sort of slamming down on people who have an opinion about this. What if somebody comes out, like anybody who says that Neil Francis is wrong and that another sport is better than rugby, suddenly that person is as bad as Neil Francis. It doesn't matter. Like, if you have that opinion, so be it. I don't care if you think that one sport is better than the other. You're probably wrong, but I don't care. At least you can have an opinion that's wrong sometimes. <laughs> Um, the the glorious short-lived ephemera of the Christmas lights is that the it's like oh this is a nice thing and it's going to pass eventually. But so, some people right now are like the person in the passenger seat and so it's like shut up stop talking about those Christmas lights. It's like you can talk about the Christmas lights if you want. I just think that it's a massive overreaction to a piece which is fairly predictable in terms of like this is a an absolute apex of achievement and it looks like we're at the start of a cycle of brilliance because of the age profile of the team. So of course you're going to start making the case, if you're a rugby columnist, that like, well, things have never been better, folks. You all better get used to it. Yeah, but I say... a good point. I say let people overreact. If they feel, like, really hurt by this and they feel that there's no way that, I don't know, Gaelic games could be displaced as a national game, then so be it. Feel that outrage. Like, I'm all for the outrage. Like, I, I, I do see your points, and I, I take... Good if some of the outrage had, like, a reasoned argument as opposed to, well, look, look at this other stuff over here. But I think the reason... This is only played by rich people. West Brits. That's basically in the, some of the, the arguments against them, like, ah, oh, West Brits. Well, no, it, summed, it summed up in, like, Some of those people may have spreadsheets, and they're like, look at the... Look at the socioeconomic factors that produce a lot of these. Maybe they do have reasons behind it, but to be fair, most of them, are, they don't. They're just angry and uh, empty vessels to a certain extent. But let the outrage continue is all I'm saying. Um, it's rugby as well. Also, who cares about what the national sport is? Why does it matter? Who cares? Who cares? Why? Well, Why are everybody obsessed with my sport's a national sport? It's like, what? Why, do you, why does it matter? It's a made-up title that means nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of made-up titles that mean nothing and mean something at the same time. Well, like? Well, the made-up title of being, say, the greatest footballer in the world. Like, there's, okay, the Ballon d'Or is a figure, is an actual thing where you can yeah. mark that person. There you go, yeah. There's no prize every year, but, oh, you are the right. number one national sport this year, well done. The greatest, fo the greatest footballer of all time, there's no prize for the greatest footballer of all time, but yeah, it is something that, that debate means something to people. The, the national sport, I can see why it's a debate that means something to people. I don't particularly care about it, but I say stop bashing people who care about it. Like no. that, you've just done it there. You, no. you said... It doesn't matter. Okay, but okay, so maybe you think it doesn't matter, but stop bashing people who think it does matter. <laughs> but stop getting caught up in this. Like, who cares if you, get, if you get caught up in it? Who cares what people care about? But because like, stop telling people what they should care about. <laughs> okay, I'm not telling people what they should care about. I'm saying that this is like a massive overreaction to a column which was predictable and really well written. Like, it was like... I would say designed to, in some ways, provoke the response that it's got. Look, you're probably right. And everybody's walking into this like, ah, no. Yes, okay. And it doesn't matter. If you're, like, if yes. you're, if you're a GA fan, That's my point. you should be secure enough in the, well, actually, I love my sport, and I'm doing my best to keep it growing. And I'm not complacent about the threat of rugby. Mm, except I'd say, well, it seems like maybe people are kind of missing the ball on that with their crappy championship structures. If you're a 16-year-old who's athletic, and playing a bit of rugby and playing a bit of GA and playing a bit of soccer, where are you going to go to? Well, yeah, I, I agree with that sentiment, but I say the people who are insecure about it, let them be insecure. Let them kind of vent anger towards columnists who said that rugby has taken over and is now going to rule Ireland forever. Let, th let them be insecure. I'm all for insecurity. The front of the Irish Examiner is rugby as well. The Thinking 10, Ian Keatley, we're not going to go out and out-muscle a team like Toulon. Uh, Don Lenhan saying, oh, for some of Leinster's strength and depth down south. It's probably a kind of a sentiment that's shared by a lot of people in Munster. Leaving the chest for last. It's because he's got his chest out. Uh, that is the uh, top off. Sean Donlan celebrating the winner deep into injury time. And then Noel King obviously on the sideline after our 1 0 win against Azerbaijan last night in Tala. Scenes. Look at those scenes. Is uh, rice and shine. 99 problems, but a decade one is the uh, tab of the morning to you. Uh, no. I, heard, I saw one saying 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one, which is probably kind of beats it, but I can't remember what the, the pitch reason was. Um, was it Nafina? Could it be. That would have been a suitable headline for anybody, any GA correspondents out there. That's your headline for the Nafina story. Uh, Pogba sends message to Jose. Under fire midfielder turns on French style. They uh, won Dead well last night. in a friendly against Russia. I mean, if you, anytime you beat Russia, though, you know. Gotta be careful what you say these days. Don't want to end up poisoned. Uh, show some respect. Parlor backs under fire Wenger. Wenger. I mean, 
like, that'll tell you where we are in the news cycle at the moment, where Ray Parler saying stuff about Wenger is the back page lead. It's just because nothing's happening at the moment. In the, it's the 24, 48 hours after internationals, and I guess we're not really free of the internationals yet, because there was a Jamie Vardy uh, VAR controversy last night. Yeah, but it, it, to be fair, it was a controversy. I'm all for VAR, but the reason why VAR was brought in was so that referees can make a clear and reasoned decision and make a definite decision where clearly last night the Italian player was going down before James Tarkovsky's foot connected with his. By the way, I've never heard anybody other than troops from Arsenal Fan TV use the word Wenger as you just did two yeah, moments ago. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, I mean, look at that, look at that, look at that. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, PSG I have Conte. <laughs> Hey, look at that. Look. look. From Russia with love. Look. It's fucking... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's too Russia with love. Yeah, yeah but it's for Acker, as double saying. I mean, come on. PSG, I have Conte. <laughs> From Paris with love, Antonio, please come and help us become best in Europe. I mean, if you're PSG and you spent a billion and you're like, why have we not won this thing yet? Why are we still... We just signed what we thought was the best footballer in the world and... He, like, he's injured at the time? That's not how football's supposed to work. We buy stuff and it works. Uh, but that hasn't been the case yet in Paris. And who knows what's going to happen with them, but maybe they'll never win. That'd be great. Uh, just a couple of other stories then. The Racing Post on the front page here is going with Footpath Philip for Aintree after owner's reroute star. Uh, we were chatting about this yesterday with Johnny Ward and Footpad was looking to be going in the Gold Cup at Ferry House this weekend, but that's not going to happen. Going for the Aintree National now at this point, so that's a big development in terms of racing. And then lastly for me is the Irish Daily Mail. Crying foul, England's night ruined by VAR penalty. Uh, I think that's pretty much the team on the back of the UK pages as well. Yeah, spot of bother, Telegraph front page there. Uh, England Furious' VAR penalty ruling cost them victory. How could he not have known? Anger as Lehman keeps Australia job while players' leadership group of three are sent home in disgrace. I mean, I, I, you know, I realise that like uh, everybody in Australia is saying this is a massive deal for us and we're, we're you know, hugely embarrassed by the cheating of these three. But like, you know, it's the three lads who cheated. That's it. It's on them. Also, this is the best thing that has ever happened to cricket. The best thing that... There is something utterly glamorous about cheating of this sort. Like, I hate to glorify it, but it is glamorous. Let's, let's call a spade a spade here. Like, do you want to now watch Australia's next test match if those three guys who we had never heard of before... What is it? Steve Smith, Cameron Bancroft. I'm surprised I even remember those names. Like, Lehman is the name of the coach. I, know, I now know three people involved with Australian test cricket. How many did I know last One week? One of whom isn't Shane Warren. One of whom who isn't Shane Warren exactly. So this has been the best thing that's ever happened to cricket, the best thing that's ever happened to Australian cricket. The the best thing that could possibly the best contribution cricket could make to world sport in a world that hasn't already been penetrated by cricket, that is the best thing that could have happened. And these three guys are gonna go down in history as, you know, the Australia three or whatever they're gonna be called down the line. And I am watching Australia's next test match. I'm gonna take four days off work and watch the full thing start to finish. This is um the Chicago Black Sox of the 19 teens? E 13? Well, today, as a result of kind of not having a, an international media so connected as it is now, maybe it didn't gain the global notoriety that this is getting. But I, I, see, I, I guess the legacy, though. And in its own way, I think because there were so few stories that that story did actually go around the world, it was like, ooh, World Series fixed. What about A Rod? See, A Rod kind more, of. More glamorous. Barry Bonds, more glamorous. A Rod, definitely more glamorous because you've got the Madonna element and the money. Okay, Ma are, you know. maybe Madonna trumps uh, cheating, but uh, I, I think Barry Bonds, A Rod, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of them? Why are they so famous? Why are they better than the rest? Um, well, there's obvious reasons for that, but you know. Well, Barry Bonds hit more home runs than anybody else. Well, over there you a go. Of time. There you go. There, there is that. There is that. But, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the NFL head coaches was interviewed. Should Barry Bonds be in the uh, Hall of Fame? Like, yeah, straight away. So that's happening this year. Uh, later on this summer, he's going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame over in San Fran. So that, that'll be an interesting story to, to keep an eye on. It's, it's just. Or not. There's others just inside like baseball. No, they like their juicers in baseball. Fair play to them. They're like nakedly open about it as opposed to cycling, which is like, we love our juicers, we just don't like the ones that get caught. Yeah, precisely. Well, like, some of the ones that get caught, like, I mean, uh, Vinokurov with Team Astana, of course, Richard Veronk, who, are, who I've spoken about on the show before as uh, working for some top French media outlet. And uh, yeah, so if you get caught, just, you know. Poor Veronk couldn't actually even win when he was open. Couldn't actually get it together to win. Well, you see, the thing was, he got busted before they got the good stuff into them, didn't they? In uh, uh, Festina, in yeah. 
Yeah, although they had to go to the for a while, right? Well, that is true, but so did everybody else.